Let's bring in Trump campaign national co-chairman and chief policy advisor, Sam Clovis. Sam, what's going to happen? Well, I think it's going to be a great meeting. I think that uh, uh, both gentlemen are going to sit down and they're going to sort out some issues there. I think it, it really is, a, is an important part of what, what goes on. I think uh, we've had a bruising campaign. Uh, 17 candidates started. There's one left standing. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to sort out exactly how all this happened. And I do think there's a sense of a denial still here in Washington, D.C. I'm down in D.C. Uh, right now that, that I, I still think that a lot of people in this town uh, have not quite come to grips with what has happened across this country and why Donald Trump's been able to bring the coalition together he has and receive more votes than any other president, uh, Republican presidential candidate in history. Sam, to, on that point, when Paul Ryan first came out, and I think the quote was, I'm not there yet, going yeah. back and watching that, it seemed like he was just legitimately shocked that the nomination had gotten wrapped up so quickly and he was asked about it and he was like whoa uh, and rather than just saying I don't really know Donald Trump that well I want to meet with him before I say anything it, he's, he made that statement was it maybe worse on the surface in your mind than deep down it, it really Ab is in yeah, reality absolutely you know Paul Ryan's a good guy he's the the speaker of the house he's you don't get there by being a, a you know a, anything other than a fantastic person uh, he's serious. Uh, he's uh, a serious person. Uh, he's a person who has a serious job. And I think that really what has happened, though, he, I think people get tied up, you know, when they're in Washington, they get uh, bound up in, in the day to day here in Washington. And what they don't realize is what's going on across the country. I mean, if you listen to people in Congress talk, they talk like they're in Congress. Uh, they talk to each other. They exchange information like it's for each other. And what's missing is they miss the message from the people. And I think that the people in D.C. now are starting to get that message, and I think Mr. Trump is going to be a great, uh, a great standard bearer for us. Sam, Lee Carter, the uh, Republican pollster, is here for you. So I just have a question. I mean, to me, I think this whole conversation with Paul Ryan is really authentic, and I think it's, yep. it's one that needs to be had. So the way this is being handled, I think, frankly, is, is great. But what concerns me more is, is the, the other candidates, the other folks are saying, I will not go to the convention. I will not right. be part of this process. And how, how are the negotiations going with them? Well, I, I think a little bit. This is, a, as I've said many times when I, I've had the opportunity, uh, this is really a, a two-way street. I mean, there, there, we understand that there are probably some hurt feelings. We understand there are probably some diametrically opposed views out there. But this is one of the reasons that I think it's been this candidacy has been so important is because it's brought so many more views, so many more people into the Republican tent that haven't been there for decades, frankly. And I think this is one of the most important aspects. Some of these people will get over it. They'll figure it out and they'll come on board because take a look at the choices. We either have Donald Trump or we have Hillary Clinton, which will be an extension of the Obama administration. And I don't think anybody in the Republican Party wants that. Well, so has, I think they'll come around. <laughs> Sam, has somebody called Mitt Romney on the phone, maybe not from the campaign, <laughs> but from the party instead? Because, again, he puts out a statement on Facebook yeah. about Mr. Trump's tax returns. Has anybody called Romney and said, um, cut it out? Well, I, I think that really what has happened, if you take a look at, at the, uh, uh, the opinions that are forming around this, the, the trends that you see on uh, social media, which I don't do, by the way, I just, I just you know, I just, but I, this is what I hear, <laughs> that the, the, what we're seeing is that, that Mitt Romney, through his own hand, is marginalizing himself. He's putting himself out on the fringe here, and, and it really starts to look like a sore loser, and, and that really... Uh, you know, Governor Romney is a better person than that, and, and, and hopefully he'll come to his senses and he'll come around. Sam, I want to ask you about uh, Trump's economic plans. Your campaign yeah. has, have, has said that Trump would be, this is what you said. So you made news yesterday. I saw your name in the Wall Street Journal this morning. <laughs> Here's what you said. After you were at an event in Washington, after the administration has been in place, then we'll start to take a look at all of the programs, including entitlements like Social Security and, and Medicare. We'll start taking a hard look at those to start seeing what we can do in a bipartisan way. Needle scratches across the record, Sam. <laughs> well, how so? I mean, I, I just I think it's that's a prudent governance. I think that we have said we're not going to look at those things right now. We're, we have too many other things. And Dagan, you know, and, I, and I'll tell Lee and Mike, they're all sitting there, that nothing happens if we don't have growth. If we do not have a pro-growth agenda, 
coming out here. We can't look at any of these other things because it's not going to matter. If we don't have a pro-growth economy, we're looking for 4% growth over a sustained period. Mm -hmm. If we don't get to that, none of the rest of this is, is any part of the conversation because this is going to be a house of cards that's going to collapse. But it's, Our debt's going to overwhelm us, and we're not going to be able to do anything. We're going to, in eight years, we're going to be paying more on servicing the debt than we are on almost anything else in the budget. I agree with you, Sam, but did you check this out with Donald Trump in advance because he has said that he didn't want to touch Social Security? Well, we're not going to touch it. We're not going to touch anything, and, and you know, don't read too much into this. What I said was that I was asked the question, would this be something that we would look at? The answer is, of course we're going to look at it. It's what all prudent and responsible administrations should do. We're not going to be able to do anything for a couple of years anyway until we see this growth uh, start in our economy because without a firm footing in the economy, mm -hmm. we're not, all of this conversation is not going to be matter because we're going to be crisis to crisis otherwise, right. Dagan. And this, we want to get out in front of this. And this is, I think it's just prudent and responsible government to say, yeah, we'll look at everything because that's, that's what we're going to do. We'll look at everything. It's not okay. saying we'll take action, but we'll look at it. Speaking of big bucks, really quickly, Sam, fundraise and tell me about it. Is the money pouring in? How's it happening? I know that Boone Pickens has endorsed Donald Trump. He's going to have a fundraiser for him. How's that going? Well, I think it's really picking up because, you know, this is uh, something that and if you've been around politics a long time, Dagan, you know how hard this is. Once you get it stood up and once you get the people involved, uh, it really becomes a, a kind of a self-licking ice cream cone as you go down the road because more and more people will come on board. There'll be more and more events. The responsibility of the candidate is to help raise money not only for his campaign or her campaign, mm -hmm but for the party and for other candidates down the ticket. So uh, this is going to become a part of our, our mix on, on uh, events and things we have to do. And as you know, this, all it does is continue to mount up the schedule that the presidential candidate has to meet. Great to see you, Sam. As always, Sam Clovis, you're welcome back here anytime, sir. Roll Tide. <laughs>